guys, Rushy here. Welcome back to the Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood. Um, I haven't played it in a bit. I've been doing other things, so I'm excited to get back into it and see what happens and continue our little story. Jesus, I forgot how loud this game was. Look at Abramar. Look at him. Hey. All right, so what were we doing? I have some visitors up there, it looks like. My little teapot cauldron. It's freaking adorable. That looks terrifying. Is that a fucking like spider web hand or is that an actual? Oh, it's a spider holding a scroll. Okay. It looks, for some reason I had in my brain, it looked like the, I was like, is that the hand from Coraline? Um, and then there's like a bird. Let's do the hand. Witch Fortuna. My friend Jasmine is always talking about you and she just told me you're allowed to receive visitors now. Congratulations. Sorry for contacting you so abruptly, but I think your divinatory arts could help me regarding a thing with a personal project. And I'm in a bit of a desperate situation. Or we have Greece. My name is Greece. I'm a witch architect. I believe our common friend Dahlia told you about my situation. I need the maximum discretion regarding this matter, so I'd rather talk about the rest in person if you're willing to have me. Hmm. Okay, so actually I should check how many cards I have. I browse my deck. So I have, oh yeah, my Howling Fairy. Okay, well, let's invite someone to come see us. And I just realized that if you click multiple times, it skips everything. That's fun. I want Louise. Let's invite Louise. She's on a flying carpet. Hell yeah. Hey, girl. She has four hands. Uh, welcome. Welcome. Uh, hi, what's your name? Fortuna, your name is Fortuna. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> nice to meet you. Your name is Louise, right? No need to be so nervous. Any friend of Jasmine is welcome here. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just that I've heard so many things about you that now I feel like I'm meeting a celebrity or something. Oh yeah? What have you heard? Uh, all good things, don't worry. Mostly from Jasmine. She loves you and missed you so much. You know that. I missed her a lot too. Why don't you take a deep breath and tell me a bit about yourself? Uh, okay, sorry. My name is Louise and... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm drawing blank. It's okay, how about I ask you some questions? Would that be alright? Uh, okay, that's good, thank you. Let's see. Uh, how do you know Jasmine? Uh, she hired me to weave a special net to gather dew from her greenhouse. It's one of the projects I'm most proud of. The dew filtered through this net makes an astounding base substance for all kinds of flower-based potions. Jasmine's brews became quite popular after my contribution. <laughs> it's been centuries since I've had something from Jasmine. I can't wait to try this improved version. Together we also develop some magical tea bags that multiply the fragrance of dried mixtures. That's so cool. Now I see how you two became close. Both you and Jasmine are super crafty. It's got to be so much fun to find someone to share your passion with. It is indeed. I always have a great time with Jasmine. Nice. More questions? Let's see. What's your speciality or what do you like to do in your spare time? What do you like to do in your spare time? Oh, uh, I love reading, playing my multi-neck bass, and spying on mortals. Oh, wow, that's weird. Reading? Uh, is it not hip to read anymore? Hip? <laughs> I was just kidding. The odd part is spying on mortals. And I'm a bit curious about the multi-neck bass too, to be honest. Uh, I play a custom bass guitar with three necks since I have multiple arms and all that. But I don't play it in front of people. I only use it to meditate. It's really soothing to weave several deep melodies together. I like the idea. I wish I could hear it someday. What about spying on mortals? I love making myself invisible and just watching them go about their lives. Comparing lifestyles from many different cultures and planets. After many years of observation, I gained the ability to perceive their entelechy. That's how I found my calling and developed my pith weaving. My pith weaving? Yeah, pith weaving? Ah, sorry, that's my special ability. 
I can tell you more about it if you're interested. Whatever you want to ask is cool, actually. Relax. Let's see. What's your speciality? Oh, right. I'm a pit weaver. Oh, that sounds cool. What does it mean? I can harvest mortals and teleki. It's a magic substance that defines one's behavior and desires. A single mortal rarely produces enough thread, but if you find a community with a rich collective subconscious, you can weave whole clothes and capes. Wow, that's hard to picture, but it sounds fun. And these clothes you craft have magical properties, I imagine. That's right. It depends on the kind of community you pull the thread from. As a quick example, the yarn extracted from a band of artists could make a lovely scarf that stimulates the wearer's creativity. I love it already. I'll weave something sometime for you. What kind of entelechy would you like? Most. Oh, from mums and their children, from soldiers and warriors, or from astronauts. Mums and their children. Oh, how sweet. That's a really powerful energy, let me tell you. If I get the chance, I'll bring you a nice cloth as a thank you present for having me. Thank you so much. Do you want to know anything else? You make it sound like this is an interrogation. <laughs> no, no, sorry, I'm having a good time. But it's easier for me if you ask me things. Sure. Let's see. Why did you come to see me? Ah, oh, yes, better get to business. I'm here precisely because of my pith weaver skills. As I explained, the entelechy from mortals varies depending on the community they're in and the lives they lead. The universe provides enough different contexts to find what, whichever kind of energy fits your purpose. But of course, there's the shortcut of manipulating mortals to produce the substance you need. For example, you could add lust serum to the water supply of a community to harvest massive amounts of sexual energy from their orgies. Quite an example. Uh, not that I've tried this more than once. I usually prefer all natural chaos bred entelechy. The thing is, Aidana saw a lot of potential in one of my projects. It started back when Earthlings began their conquest to space. The colonies on Mars were proliferating at a supernatural speed. Conflict spread through every bordering nation on Earth and on any planet mankind set foot on. I felt an imperative need to witness that massive event. It all oozed an otherworldly energy. So I spent decades spinning thread from it. And as it happens, that substance can create an extremely effective weapon for capturing behemoths. What? Really? How so? Earth's entelechy was highly contaminated. It was as if the old planet's fate had somehow been sealed. And behemoths happened to be extremely susceptible to reality-altering arts. I use that substance to weave gladiator-like webs that can suck any entangled behemoth dry of their magic. You can also craft decent pieces of armour against Behemoth spells. Ah, uh, and why is Aidana so interested in developing such armaments? The Cosmic Echoes warned her that Behemoth will threaten the coven, so she wants to prepare accordingly. The problem is that even with such a tremendous phenomenon, I only managed to pull enough thread to craft one set of web and armour. And Aidana's set on a developing a massive weapon to erase Behemoth from this plane of existence entirely. I don't believe I have what it takes to see this through. What do you need to make this happen exactly? Aidana discovered that if you promote war and stir conflict in this new society, the reality-altering arts that engulf the planet try to fight back. As if everyone was programmed to preserve the status quo. In this process, humanity's entelechy once again shows the characteristics it had when the massive change happened. And I can harvest it. Uh, so what are you... Aidana tasked me with provoking World War Three. <gasps> That's terrible. We can't allow that. Exactly. But I don't want to anger Aidana. There's already been talk of expelling me from the coven should I fail to deliver. Isn't there a way out of this? This is totally unfair. Aidana's pushing it too far. Let's take a look at what the cards have to say. That World War Three. Aidana's losing it! I need you to tell me exactly what you want to ask the deck. First, the most important thing, what should I do with Earth? That's if I should do anything at all with it. Understood. Then, this is a bit embarrassing, 
but I happen to be in love with a mortal. <gasps> That's totally cool. The thing is, he doesn't know I'm a witch. Oh! I present myself to him in the form of a regular woman. He's a smuggler in one of Earth's remaining colonies. He doesn't have an easy life. It breaks my heart and I wish I could save him. But I'm afraid to show him my true nature. I'm sure he's noticed there's something special about me, but still. So that's another question. What should I do about my mortal lover? My advice is not to get too attached to mortals. They wither too fast. But sure, let's check what the cards have to say about him. I'd also like to know how to handle Adana. Handle her? I'm sure she's going to be really upset when she finds out I want to quit. I don't want to be expelled or exiled. Is there any way to escape her wrath? I wish I knew. That's going to be a hard one, but this is a new deck. Maybe it will find a solution. I'm shuffling the cards now. Keep your questions and your thoughts. Come on, Fortuna. Pondering. The power of the gem skull belt. A symbol for tires tirelessness, indefa indefatigable support. The obsidian sledgehammer fixates on offering empowering revelations. So it's excessive earth energy. Determination, rightfulness, support, success, indifference. Determination. That's how you deal with Adana. Stand up to Adana. Rebellion will bring you real happiness no matter the cost. Open up to Adana. She will be surprisingly understanding and work with you to find the middle ground. Or feed Adana some lies and in time she'll give up and focus elsewhere. Stand up to her. Stand up to Adana. Rebellion will bring you real happiness no matter the cost. Rebellion. You may be punished, you may be expelled, you may even come out unscathed. But what my deck knows for sure is that standing up to her will lead you to happiness. It'll let you escape this obnoxious situation for sure. And you'll be able to start a new chapter of your life. When you put it like that, I feel silly for not having done it earlier. You're right, Fortuna. My principles are more important than satisfying someone, anyone, even our leader. I'll let Adana know that I'm done with this project. That's great. I've got your back. Let me know if I can help you in any way. You already did. Thank you, Fortuna. You're welcome. Love ya. I like Louise. She's cool. Uh, Moonstone Temple's a gateway to illumination. So determination, rightfulness, deception. Did I just get pretty much the exact same thing? Let's do it with love. Reveal your true nature to him. He will understand and love you even more. Kidnap him and make him live in your domain. He doesn't love you, he's just taking advantage of you because you provide for him. No, the first one. Reveal your true nature to him. He will understand and love you even more. What? Really? So, say the cards and I've never seen them. Uh, oh, so say the cards and I've never seen them ever. By the cosmos, this is incredible news. How should I go about it? Tell him over a romantic dinner. Should I surprise him with a colourful spell? In bed? <laughs> Whatever lets you enjoy the moment the most. Thank you so much, Fortuna. Yay! Now I'll get some purple if we can. Deception, the unknown rejection, bad omen, change, rebirth. War distorts all feeling. Earth won't give you what you need no matter what you do. Take a large group of mortals to a magic domain and farm their energy there. We already established that I won't have to comply with Adana's orders. So why read about exploiting planet Earth? Well, we already asked the question, we might as well check what the deck has to say. Maybe you'll need to harvest a specific intellect in the future. Knowledge is an asset. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Here's my reading. Earth won't give you what you need no matter what you do. So it was impossible all along. Hmm. Well, who cares? It's official. I'm going to stand up to Adana. There's no other way out of this. I wish you the best. Thank you. Phew, that was an intense session. I've had my fortune read before, but it's never felt like this. Nah, because I'm the best. You sure are something else, Fortuna. I'm just happy to help. I'll let you know how everything plays out. That's if you're okay with me visiting again, of course. You're always welcome in my house, Louise. 
Any friend of Jasmine's is a friend of mine. That was. Well, I'm a bit drained after so much divination. See you soon. Bye, Louise. Love you fit, girl. So we've met Jasmine, we've met Dahlia, and we've met Louise now. And now we get to meet Dahlia's friend, Greece. <gasps> is that a skull? Who are you? Oh, my God. Hello, Greece. Grace? <gasps> Welcome, Grace. Hi, Fortuna. Thanks for having me. Dolly filled me in briefly on your situation. Not that it isn't obvious just by looking at me, huh? Uh, yeah, it looks bad. Let me say it out loud anyway for the sake of therapy. I've got a behemoth fused with me. How does it feel? Oh, well, never thought I'd get that question. Uh, the few who know assume it's just fucked up, I guess. But if we're talking feelings here, it doesn't feel bad at all, actually. I mean, aesthetically, it's terrible. But it doesn't hurt, and I can sort of communicate with the behemoth at an abstract level. If anything, I feel more powerful. Wow. Glad to you're not suffering in any case. But it isn't worth it. Firstly, because summoning a behemoth could, well, get me executed. But more importantly, I want my cute cheekbone back. <laughs> Looks like an important loss, yes. So, do you, you think you could help me? If there's a way to cure you, my deck will find it. But I need to know more about you first. Mind if I ask some questions? Of course. Ask away. Why summon a behemoth? Uh, this isn't an easy topic for me to discuss. Um... Not because of the behemoth, that part is pretty straightforward. <laughs> I wanted to build a temple out of the skull of a titan of the quarry. The harder the material, the more powerful the altar. And those skulls, they resist carving in a supernatural way. I tried every method I know, and when I ran out of options, I resorted to forbidden magic. Why are you so desperate to build that shrine? That's the sensitive issue. I'm looking for meaning. Meaning? I know, it's an unanswerable question. Or a question that hasn't been answered yet, if I want to put this optimistically. The meaning of life. I feel silly just saying it out loud. Why? Everyone thinks about it now and then. Yeah, but I'm like obsessed with it. I can't ignore the question. You're a fortune teller. You should be aware that there is something more out there. The book where everything is written. Is there someone writing us? Is this just a simulation? Does the universe actually exist, or is it nothing but a figment of my imagination? Do you stop existing when I'm not looking at you? Ah, uh, object permanence. <laughs> Are we all protagonists? Do we have a purpose? Okay, okay, I get you. Am I missing out on some cosmic truth? Was there something before this universe? Why isn't everybody else obsessed with these same questions? Great. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep spiraling out of control. I can't stand being by myself because I keep returning to these ideas again and again. I've built countless thought shrines looking for answers. And as I dig deeper, I only find more and more questions. I haven't slept in the last century. That's why I summoned the behemoth. Carpe diem is not an option for me. I'm stuck in cogito ergo sum. I've never heard, I've heard of carpe diem. I don't know what cogito, cogito ergo sum is. I'm a witch, for fuck's sake. If not us, who is supposed to unravel the mysteries of the cosmos? Why did I ascend? Why couldn't I stay an oblivious Boston architect? You know, the cards aren't only made for predicting things. They are also an excellent tool for meditation. I'd be happy to help you on your quest. Really? Of course. If the two of us manage to get out of our mm, predicaments, I'll certainly join you in one of your Skull Temple meditations. Who knows what we might find channeling the power of your shrines through my deck? That makes my heart race. Yes, please. Let's dissect the cosmos together. I love Pear. What's your predicament, though? Ah, I'm exiled, forced to remain on this asteroid. Let's leave it at that for now. Hmm, okay. I promise I'll help you be free in any way I can. Partners? Partners. Partners! How exciting! Everyone always dismisses my project as futile. 
Thank you so much, Fortuna. Now another question. Tell me more about being a witch architect. Wait, 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 wait. What do you say we make this a conversation instead of an interrogation? It's not an interrogation, it's an interview. And besides, I'm not that interesting. <laughs> Come on, Fortuna, all witches are interesting. And you're the only fortune teller in our coven. Dahlia speaks highly of you two. I'm dying to know more. To be honest, I feel kind of awestruck just by the way you look at me. I can tell you aren't cut from the same cloth as the rest of us. You're special. I've never said this to anyone. I feel ridiculous, but I just need to express it. Uh, thanks. What do you want to know, anyway? Hmm. What is it that drives you? Freedom. Hmm, but that's circumstantial. I mean, ultimately, what makes your life worth living? What is it that drives you? Curiosity. Curiosity. I'd say that's my raison d'etre, too. Interesting. I feel like you're using me for your cosmic studies. Well, I can't miss the chance to pick apart such a wonderful being. It's alright, bring it on. Thank you so much for indulging me. I'm truly enjoying this, though. Glad you're having a good time. My turn now? Sure. Ask away. What do you like to do in your free time? What do you like to do in your free time? Hmm, I spend most of my time on my project, but on the rare occasion when I'm burned out, I like to read. I read essays and arcane texts. Mostly philosophy, so I guess I don't ever really rest. <laughs> well, I, I do enjoy taking extremely long baths. Even then, I can't stop thinking I'm cursed by my never-ending quest for illumination. Have you met Jasmine? I haven't, although Dahlia speaks about her often. Why? She may have something to help you get your mind off things. Jasmine's speciality is teacraft. She's helped me through many difficult times. Cool, witch drugs. Uh, more or less. But without the drawbacks of the substance produced by mortals. I'll try anything. Hook me up! I'll let her know. So, Fortuna, tell me. What are your thoughts on relationships? You asking me if I'm single? No, silly. But are you? Yes. Cool. What I mean is, what are your thoughts on romantic relationships? Some people can't live without them, some others don't want them at all. I'm curious where you stand on that. What are your thoughts on relationships? Uh, life can't be complete without one. Desirable and enjoyable. Cool but overrated. I don't get them and I don't want them. Desirable and enjoyable. I think that's an interesting question. For me personally, I think I always kind of need to have someone just to be there, like as a rock. I'm a very emotionally dependent person. But I also can totally understand like the want to just be by yourself and be alone because I'm very, I'm kind of like, I love being by myself a lot. I feel like I get really overstimulated if there's too much people and yeah, I don't know. I kind of get both sides of it, but I would say they're desirable and enjoyable. Desirable and enjoyable. Although it's rare that someone catches my eye. Okay, your turn again. Ask away. Tell me more about being a witch architect. It's a made up title, to be honest. I've never encountered another witch who defined herself as an architect, at least. A pioneer, then. I just like to build things. I was also an architect when I was a mortal. But being able to design and execute projects by yourself is way better than overseeing years of development. And all the bureaucracy, ugh. I'm sure that I ascended out of pure stress. <laughs> Plus, using magic to avoid having to deal with the laws of physics sure is a perk. Sounds like a pain building things on Earth. You bet. I was one of those people who preferred playing Minecraft in creative mode. <laughs> yes! Minecraft. Ah, uh, that may have come after your time. You come from Earth too, right? When did you ascend? She's from the 60s? I guess I should have known because of the, the van and the... Yeah, wow, I didn't... 1968. Whoa. I was born in the year 2000 and ascended in 2032. Were you a hippie? Not really, but I met a lot of them. I owned a food truck and visited a lot of events. Had a side business reading tarot too. That sounds really cool. 
Glad to know you're not one of those medieval witches. I can't stand them. Yeah, they're so uptight. Do you value personal over collective well-being? Whoa, what a thing to spurt out of the blue. What's more important, yourself or the community? Yourself or the universe? And I won't accept any compromise on this one. Ultimately, should you have to choose, what should the priority be? The individual or the group? Everyone. Everyone. Even if that makes you miserable? Can't be too happy if Max and says other people. Although I did summon a behemoth, so my bad, but... It takes a special kind of selfishness to be happy at the expense of others, right? There isn't much of a dilemma if you put it that way. I say this as a general rule. On a case-by-case -case basis, though, there are times when you have to look out for yourself and your loved ones. Yeah, I agree. Nothing is ever that easy. Just wanted to probe your thoughts on the matter. Satisfied? Yes, thank you. Your turn. Ask away. What are your thoughts on Adana? What are your thoughts on Adana? Oh, time to talk about the boss. I guess neither of us have had a lot of sympathy for her. Right? I'm not super happy with having been sentenced to a thousand years of isolation, no. And you? I summoned a behemoth. I think that speaks for itself when it comes to my respect for authority. I didn't mind her before, though. She's always let me focus on my project. But now that I know she'll have me executed if she discovers what I did, I have to get rid of either this behemoth or Adana. Oh, heavy words. What? I'm not keen on being erased, at least not before I finish my quest for knowledge. I understand. And you're not the only one who's fed up with our leader's policies. Adana's full of herself if she thinks she can handle this many discontented witches. Look, I understand we need some rules to ensure the stability of the coven, but I can't possibly agree with these arbitrary punishments. Under no circumstances should a witch ever be sentenced to death or exile. If someone made some bad decisions, they need guidance and forgiveness. We're supposed to be a family, not the army. I couldn't agree more. We need to construct instead of prosecute. I hear you. Fortuna, I feel like I'm ready to get my fortune read. Yes, me too. Shall we? Is she drinking whiskey? Because if she is, I think I'm in love with her. I imagine that the main topic here is how to deal with that behemoth of yours. Yes, please. Also, I'd like to ask about my personal quest while we're at it. I doubt a single card will allow me to finally untangle the meaning of life in the cosmos, but... Maybe not. But I'm sure it'll be able to point you in the right direction. Yes, the quest for knowledge is about asking questions from as many angles as possible. And your deck is one I haven't tried yet. Keep these questions in mind while I shuffle the deck. I hope I can help. Guide, discovery, justice, pred predestination, and luck. Oh, that sounds like the quest. The meaning of life lies within the minds of others. Spend more time with other people to find progress. You will never untangle the meaning of life, but your work will allow others to reach it. Greatest love and greatest loss. I like the meaning of life is uh, within the minds of others. The meaning of life lies within the minds of others. Spend more time with other people to find progress. Ah, uh, I don't have the patience for that. I find most interactions to be pointless. Thank you. I, I don't mean you, silly. I'm enjoying this. I get easily bored of company for the sake of company. I need stimulus in my life, interesting, important conversations. But maybe that's the point I'm missing. Wasting time, playing around. I guess ideas need to be pollinated. A lonely mind can run out of ideas, become sterile. Exposure to other lifestyles and philosophies can challenge my frame of mind. It makes a lot of sense. You've helped me a great deal, Fortuna. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for lots of pink. And pondering. Determination, rightfulness, support, success, and difference. Well, this has to go to the behemoth. Conquer them. The behemoth is feeding on your fear. Stop being afraid. It's your turn to intimidate them. Or you will never be free, even if detached. The behemoth's seed will remain in your brain forever. Right, that's one. Conquer them. The behemoth is feeding on your fear. Stop being afraid. It's your turn to intimidate them. Easier said than done, but I like the idea of turning myself into the scary one. If the deck suggests it, it's because it's possible. And you certainly have a great deal of presence. You think so? 
Come on, look at yourself. The question now is how to intimidate a behemoth. They might seem all otherworldly, but they're fools the same as us. How do you know that? Ah, clairvoyant. Okay. Do you want to look into anything else? No, thank you. You've given me some ideas about how to get rid of this behemoth. I'll, I'll do some research on my side too. Cool. Let's meet again soon to teach this bastard a lesson. Looking forward to it. See you soon. Bye, Gray. Love you. Love that she's on a like. Oh, Abramo. Hey, what up, buddy? Looks like behemoths are in. Yeah, they're all the rage amongst rebel witches with poor judgment. <laughs> I think I can help if you're interested. I'm all ears. We, the behemoth, know each other's names. If you knew the name of the behemoth possessing Grace, any ritual you might perform to free her would not be more likely to succeed. That's perfect. Tell me the name. Ah, I know we're partners in crime, but I'm not about to give up one of my siblings. Not for free, at least. Am I not paying enough to you already? The deck stuff is one thing. This is another matter. All right, what do you want? Don't fret. I just want a bit of that delicious power you're harvesting. Five units of fire to betray a fellow behemoth, plus two of air to release their name to you, witches. Hmm. You don't need to answer right now. Save up. Decide if you're interested or not. And when the time comes to try and free Grace, you just let that energy flow to me and I'll whisper the behemoth's name to your ear. I see. It's not too high of a cost, right? Just a bit of magic for your dear mentor. It's not the amount, but the thought of what you're planning to do with it. <laughs> Still afraid of me after all this time. Just cautious. I'm sure you're a forbidden entity for a reason. Suit yourself. But I'll say it again. I am on your side. Just needs time. I understand. Well, you let me know if you want to take up on my offer when the time comes. Have fun. I will do, Abramar. What is this in my window? Oh, Jasmine. No, I don't want to do that yet. I want to go make another card. Let's go down here and make a card. Because we got some stuff. We, so we need fire and air. So I think I'm going to focus on earth. And we'll do an earthy card. If we can. Oh yeah, the Titan Quarry looks good. Or the Forgotten Factory. I kind of want to do the Forgotten Factory. So many millennia go. Oh, but that takes a fire. Let's do. Let's do Titan's Quarry. I didn't even read it. I'm an idiot. Okay. And then we got some pink, so we could have the Harvey Herald. So we did the quarry. That is terrifying. That would be on my air. I guess it's not happening for a while. So the dragon's cool. Hmm. The Fallen Hero. Sure. And then we'll get some pink in here, right? Onyx Trumpet. Pink and blue. That's seashells. Any more? Ooh! An Arbiter Book. Let's go! Okay. So I think I want to be like down. Maybe like down here. All right. I'm going to make this card and then I'll be right back. Okay, I think I'm done. So like the vibe I have is like she's facing them, right? Like head on. 
and she's been injured by this guy throwing this sword into her back but she's also at the same time doing magic on the side to cause an arrow to like stab through his hand yeah she's she's fighting her last battle is how i view this card something else is at my window now recess the titans of the quarry reinforce the arcana with their awe the hero inspires us to achieve the impossible a song for incredible deeds the arbiter's book puts this revelation in front of many eyes so guardian ego authority alliance leadership and purpose wonderful we've got another couple of people at our door um oh it's dahlia okay well we're gonna leave that here for today's episode and we'll come back and we'll see dahlia and jasmine again i'm so excited to see where this game goes i love this game um it's so interesting to anything that i've played before and i'm excited to delve and get my little claws into it more but thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one bye